Yes, indeed, here we are. It's me, John Park, and welcome to John Park's workshop. We're at it again. Uh, hello, FX Music and Troy Gar and C. Grover and Andy Calloway over in the Discord chat. Nice to see you. Uh, I am also, hey, Chris Frieden over in the YouTube chat. Welcome. This is it. This is the show that, uh, that happens every Thursday. And uh, today is no different. Today we're going to take a look at some products. We're going to take a look at uh, some make code. We're going to have a look at a project of the week. And uh, yes, it is a beautiful day here in the JP hood, as Seagrover says. Uh, I, before I forget, want to mention that next week on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing the unboxing of Adabox 11 and I'll be doing that during the normal Ask an Engineer slot, the Ask an Engineer time slot, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, right here, the same place you're watching this. Uh, I'll be doing the unboxing. And I believe we'll probably have Mr. Lady Ada and Lady Ada herself in the Discord chat during that. So please stop by if you have questions, if you want to see uh, the contents of the box, some demos, and, uh, and so much more. Come on by. That's next Wednesday. That's April 10th, and it's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I will still do the show, this show, the following day, Thursday. So nothing changes, just what's happening during that time slot will be a little different. Uh, all right, so let's see. Before we uh, go any further, I wanted to mention our job board. Have you been to jobs.adafruit.com lately? You should check it out because uh, jobs.adafruit.com is our free to use jobs board uh, that has people posting, companies posting for positions they're looking to fill or contract jobs, uh, as well as people putting up their skills uh, if they're looking for work. So go check out jobs.adafruit.com. Uh, hey, John K. Schafstall from Chicago. Welcome. Uh, good to see you over there in the YouTube chat. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Hey, we've got a, uh, a little coupon code for you to use in the store. So if you want to go and uh, pick something up in the Adafruit store, you can get 10% off today by using this coupon code, HORSEHEAD. That's right, HORSEHEAD. That's your code. That'll get you 10% off in the Adafruit store on all sorts of great 
parts and products uh, other than gift certificates, subscriptions, and software, but any goods that you get, any stuff that you want to pick up and use for your next project, well, use that coupon code. Go there and you'll enter it at checkout and that'll get you 10% off. And that's good uh, until midnight Eastern Standard Time tonight. And uh, yes, Troy Gar is right. He says, as in Nebula. Yeah, so Horsehead, uh, the reason I chose that is that yesterday's uh, NASA astronomy picture of the day was the Horsehead Nebula. And uh, we'll get back to that in a li little bit when we do our project. Um, but before we do that, let's have a look at the product of the week. So the product of the week this week is the Quad Alpha Numeric uh, Display Featherwing. I've got one right here. In fact, let me, let me switch to that. Look, uh, I'll make it big. Hold on. Where is it? There it is. Make that one real big and I'll just come over here in the corner here. Uh, so this is the Quad Alpha Numeric Display Featherwing. And you can see I've put a little... Uh, gel on it there because it was really bright in, in real life. It's also green and I'm using, this is a green screen uh, view right here. So it was going to white, but if I lift this up into this view, you can see I've got it uh, flashing the words game over. You can see the reflection is nice there. Uh, so unlike your typical uh, seven segment display, this is a 14 segment per character display, which means that you can do diagonals. Um, there's essentially an asterisk pattern in the middle and a box uh, pattern around the sides. <clears throat> and so that gives you uh, lots of segments to make more interesting characters than your typical seven segment display. Uh, this, I'm actually running on a Feather M0 that I plugged it into, but you can plug it into pretty much any of our Feather boards. Uh, since this is an M0 board and not an Express board, I decided to program it in Arduino to make it easy, and we have some great demo code, and I believe we have this one working in CircuitPython now as well, uh, but I haven't tried it. So let me know in the chat if you know that that's true or if that's a lie. Uh, hey, Dastels, Davis Dells has arrived in the uh, Discord chat. Nice to see you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, got something in my throat. Uh, this is a really cool um, feather wing that, here, let me unplug it and pull it apart for you, that uh, you can plug into any of our feathers. I happen to have some stacking feather pins on this feather. So here's your feather. Here is your uh, pair of two character LED elements that are then soldered into this feather wing, which is the LED backpack. And this uses the uh, HT16K33 matrix driver. So it actually only uses uh, two pins for data. It's actually clock and data. It's a, it's a I squared C device. So when it's plugged into your feather, uh, most of the pins are still available. So if you're using stacking pins or uh, a breakout or a breadboard or a doubler, uh, you'll still have lots of pins on your feather to use. Here's a little boot up sequence and then there's my game over. Um, and uh, it couldn't be easier. So you're not using up tons and tons of pins to talk to it. You're using that great little driver chip. So that's the project or rather the product of the week is uh, the quad alpha numeric feather wing. Go check it out. Um, all right, so, excuse me for one second. Turn down the volume to cough there and get that frog out of my throat. Uh, all right, so, but, you know what? That brings us to something interesting. It's a little something I like to call the Make Code Minute. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, I'm gonna pull up this and turn off this. And now we can talk about our Make Code Minute project of the week. And so today in Make Code Minute, I wanted to talk about using an arcade joystick with the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. So what I'm talking about here, let me demo it first. Um, I have a Circuit Playground Express and I've got it in our little case there. And then this is a typical arcade joystick, which is made using four limit switches. Um, so this is what you'll find in most arcade cabinets. And check this out. If I, oh, I've got it backwards. I'll try it that way. So depending on the direction that I push it, I've got lights lighting up and I've also got uh, four little uh, tones beeping. And so the way I'm doing this inside of Make Code 
is that first on start, I'm setting four of the pins that array around the Circle Playground Express to be um, using the internal uh, pull resistors. So the setting pull pin um, to pull up type resistors on pins one, two, three, and four. And then I'm setting the NeoPixels uh, to be not so bright and sort of a lavender. And now this is the bulk of what's happening is I have this big if then or if else if else if else if else statement. Uh, and it's four copies of basically the same thing, which is to say if it is reading one of these pins and since we're setting them high with the pull-up resistor, when a pin reads low, it means that it's been activated. So if we're not getting a signal on that pin, it's actually when it's been pressed, then we're going to change the LED pattern on the NeoPixels and we're going to play a tone. And so you can see on pin one, it points up. On pin four, it points down. Two left and three right. And that is all there is to it. So once again, you can see when I orient this properly. There we go. And down. Uh, and so we're able to use the four pins unlike an analog joystick. It's a very simple type of construction. It's the same as using four buttons. And that is how you can use an arcade joystick with the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. I continue to be amazed at the things you can do with make code so simply. Uh, and you'll also notice this is a pretty um, easy beginner project or classroom friendly project because there's no soldering involved. You can see I'm just using uh, alligator clip leads running to these four switches. And uh, since they all share ground, I've got some cables running ground to ground to ground to ground and then just one cable back to uh, the Circle Playground Express. And then I have these four one, two, three, and four pins going to those four switches, which are normally open. So when they close, that's when it activates. Uh, and you could neaten up that wiring with short uh, alligator clip wires. I just didn't happen to have any. So uh, there you go. So that is, uh, I think, a pretty pretty cool example of how sophisticated the things you can do are with the Circle Playground Express inside of Make Code with really understandable um, visual coding style. So yay to Make Code. <clears throat> All right, so now, you know what that brings us to is our project of the week. And so for the project of the week, let me switch over to this bench cam here and I'll head over there. And uh, what you can see is I've got a Pi Portal and displayed on it, let me just make sure I'm clicked in this window so my camera switcher works, uh, is one of NASA's astronomy pictures of the day. Uh, so I'm going to try to avoid reflections here. Uh, you can see this is the Messier 2, and we can tell because it's got a little piece of text there that tells us the uh, name of the image, and then today's date. So this is uh, 2019 4, 4. Um, And the way this is working is that NASA has a uh, service and a website called APOD, A-P-O-D, that's the Astronomy Picture of the Day. And you can just open that up in a web browser and leave it open, and it's going to change a picture every day. Uh, and I think it may auto-refresh, or you may need to click refresh every day. I'm not sure. Maybe someone, someone who's experienced with it can let me know in the chat. Um, <clears throat> but the way we're doing it here is the Pi Portal is using the ESP32 Wi-Fi coprocessor. So the main processor on here is at SAMD51, but we have this coprocessor which is uh, ESP32, and so it's handling all the Wi-Fi traffic. So I've given the Pi Portal my Wi-Fi credentials, and I've also given it a, an API key for the NASA APOD API. And what that means is that the code, it's written in CircuitPython that's running on uh, the Pi Portal, is sending a request out to this NASA API, and it's adding a, a unique API key that I got. You can, you can register for free and it's instantaneous. Just give it an email and they'll give you a, uh, an API key. Just do that one time on your computer. And then I've copied and pasted that into the code that's running on the Pi Portal. So when the Pi Portal sends this request uh, to the NASA API, 
the NASA API returns with a JSON file. And we'll take a look at these uh, files in a moment. So the JSON file, it's a, a JavaScript uh, object notation file, uh, is a nice, neat, pretty human readable and definitely computer readable form of uh, getting data passed around from device to device. So in this case, we end up with three things that we care about. There is the name of the image, and that's this Messier 2 in this case. There's the date, and then there's a path to this JPEG image file, which I say this JPEG image file. We're displaying a BMP file on here because that's uh, much faster for a device like a, a Pi Portal or most microcontrollers to open is a uncompressed raster graphic like a BMP. But that's not what NASA is serving up. NASA is actually serving up uh, these JPEG files, which is great for your computer, but would slow us down. So what's happening is we actually have a, um, whoops, what have I done? There I am. Uh, we have a service that is part of Adafruit IO. And if you're not familiar with Adafruit IO, Adafruit IO is our Internet of Things service, which also is free. Uh, if you register for Adafruit IO, then we can use your Adafruit username or Adafruit IO username and Adafruit IO key in the secrets file running on the Pi Portal, which is uh, just a place where we stash some some passwords and things like that and some API keys, so that when this code runs, it grabs that URL from NASA. It looks through the JSON file. It says here's the uh, URL to the JPEG, and then it in turn passes that URL to Adafruit IO's image conversion service. So there's an image converter that's running on the Adafruit IO servers, which can convert that then to the format that we want. In this case, in the code, it specifies turn it into the proper size, which is 320 by 240 pixels, to the proper color type and bit depth, which is RGB at 16 bits for the full image, which is 5, 6, and 5 bits respectively for red, green, and blue, uh, which is the maximum bit depth this display can show anyway. So it's, uh, it's okay that we're, we're bringing it down in color space um, from millions to tens of thousands of colors. Uh, and then it formats it as a uh, BMP, sends that BMP file to the Pi Portal, where the BMP is written as a cached uh, BMP, cache.bmp file actually appears on the flash drive of your Pi Portal, and then it can pop that onto the display. Phew! So that's a lot that it does. Um, and it doesn't take very long, but once it's up, what we do is we wait uh, 30 minutes and then we just retrieve the image again. And the reason we do this is that since it changes once a day, um, we just want to grab it roughly when the new image comes up. I imagine we could do something that's based on an exact time if, if NASA posts that at an exact time every day, and I'm guessing they do. Uh, but the way it's set up right now is just every 30 minutes it goes and it checks for that file, pulls it down, and displays it. Um, so one other thing I'll mention, and then we'll look at some of these files on the computer, is that the um, current way this is working, in order to safely write that cached file to the drive on the Pi Portal, um, we're actually running a little special file called a boot.py file that allows that file system to be written to. Normally, CircuitPython is going to be protective of uh, write operations happening, but we need to allow it to receive this write operation when the BMP file comes in. So you'll see there's one extra file than other PyPortal projects that you've used, um, but you can imagine we're going to be... Uh, opening up the doors, essentially, to doing all sorts of image file-based projects. So this is just the first one. But if you think about what we're doing, we're using the CircuitPython to request a JSON file, look at the JSON file, find an image that's in a standard key and value pair, and then go and process that image on the Adafruit I.O. servers and bring it back onto here. So if you know of a service that provides a predictable image location, and, and it doesn't even have to be uh, a predictable name, it just has to uh, have a, a predictable key that's like image today or something like that, uh, we'll be able to process that and display it on your Pi portal. Um, so it's really cool. It's really exciting to have gotten to the stage with this uh, because essentially set it and forget it once it's going. You could leave this thing on and every day you're going to uh, see a new image. Or if it's a different type of service like cat image uh, that is rotating every 10 minutes, then, then you could set it up. 
uh, to look at cats. So let's have a look um, over here at some of these files that I'm describing. And I've got a learn guide in the works that will be uh, up probably tomorrow that you'll be able to look at. Um, so let's take a look at, how about start with our Moo session. So here is um, the Moo session that I'm running right now. And, and uh, looking in the Discord, or rather in the YouTube chat, there's a question from Matambale. Hey, Matambale. Uh, he says, doesn't the Pi Portal have sufficient space and processing power to decode JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, etc.? Um, that's a great question. I think we are decoding GIFs on it now, um, but I may be wrong. I haven't done the GIF, pro GIF project. I think we have one that's up on Learn Guides. Um, actually, no, I think we're pre-processing those. So um, those are pretty hefty. So decoding, uh, the, the, that decompression that happens and decode that happens with uh, compressed file formats is probably possible on the Pi Portal, but certainly not fast. So uh, the way that it works, the same way the Hollow Wing works, and pretty much any of our TFT-based um, projects, especially running in CircuitPython, is that we're passing a um, rastered graphic. So we're doing the processing somewhere like a general purpose computer or a server to take that JPEG or that GIF and turn it into something that's uh, easy to pop open. Uh, on the Pi Portal. So, uh, having a look over here, this is, oh, what did this, it looks like I pasted something into there. <laughs> Let me reopen that NASA file. So this is nasa.py. Okay, so I'm gonna make that a lot bigger so you can see it. Uh, so you can see this is our uh, what, what happens, I'll rename this code.py, and that means that's going to be the file that runs on the Pi Portal when it restarts. And uh, what we're doing is we're importing the time library, because we're going to use that for this uh, wait every half hour. And we're importing board, which has the definitions of, of every, everything on the board, all the pins and, and so forth, display. Uh, and then we're importing the Pi Portal library. So the Pi Portal library handles a ton of things. It's uh, doing the, handling the Wi-Fi connection to the SP32, uh, it's handling the uh, display, uh, all these things that you see in this Pi Portal constructor here, how the text works, um, the backlight, the NeoPixel that's on the board, all those are being handled inside of the Pi Portal library. Um, so the next thing we're doing is we're setting these three variables. So data source, that is the URL to NASA's uh, planetary... Uh, API and in fact, let me let me pop over to my Firefox for a moment, if I can find that one, and I'll show you uh, NASA API. Should get me pretty close. So NASA's Open API. So this is the page, and if you go and click on Apply, applying for an API key, it just has like a one-line form where you add add in your email address and it'll give you a key. Uh, and then if we look on the, let me zoom this in a bit. If we look on the left side here, we've got uh, API listing. And here are, there we go, uh, a bunch of different services that you can use an API for. We're going to use this one. This is this APOD. Um, so this is their, one of the most popular websites at NASA is the astronomy picture of the day. So I'm going to open that, in fact, in a new tab, and you'll see that is what you get if you go there on your computer. Uh, and remember, we're also seeing that on our um, uh, Pi Portal. Whoops. So what are we using the, uh, the JSON for? Well, let me show you. If I take this URL that we have in the Pi Portal code and paste it here, it's going to yell at me because I've got this API key equals demo key uh, in there. So what I'm going to do for a moment is I'm going to hide this and copy and paste my own uh, key into there just so that it's not being shared around the world. Um, and so let me let's see if I can grab that stealthily one second. So I'm actually loading my code.py, which is where I've got mine stored. And so you'll get an email from NASA with this key. Uh, and I'm going to paste that into the top. I don't think you can see that. And yeah, that, that'll work. So I don't know if that's actually, 
I don't think the key is in the JSON file. It shouldn't be. Um, I have seen that the REPL in uh, Moose does show the API key in this case. So you don't want to show that to people or broadcasters. Screenshot it if you want to keep that secret. Um, not that people can do much harm with it. but So here is what the JSON file looks like. And I'll let me, uh, bring that back over here and zoom in a bit. Uh, here's the raw data. So that is what you'll get um, back in sort of less friendly, less readable form. But we can hit this pretty print inside of Firefox. Uh, different browsers will handle this differently. Uh, or we can head over to, uh, so you can see this is how these keys, here's the date key and here's its value. Uh, but it's really nice to look at it in this JSON viewer. So now you get this kind of tree view and you can close and open things. So date equaling this, uh, title equal Messier 2, and this URL. Uh, and so if I click on that URL, that takes me straight to that JPEG. So now going back to uh, look at our um, code over here. Oops, now I've done it. I think I just showed you my API key. Did you see it? That's okay. Uh, so if we look in this code, we can see these are the three variables that we're setting up. The URL, which we're going to pass to the PyPortal Pi library uh, request. The image location, which is title, and date. So those are then built into the PyPortal constructor. We tell it, here's the URL you're going to get. Here's the title, location, and date. Uh, and... Let's see, we have the NASA background.bmp. This is actually uh, unrelated to the um, NASA image. This is the NASA logo that we've got pre-installed on the Pi Portal. So you'll see here if I, let me just restart it. I just press the reset button on the back. Uh, it's going to restart. Right now it's telling me the, uh, we have this warning that we're using the file system in a writable cache. That was that thing I mentioned earlier about boot.py. Uh, now it is attempting to connect to my uh, Wi-Fi <clears throat> router. And this will take it a little bit. It depends on the router. Uh, and now we get this NASA logo. So this is just a BMP file that we stuck on the um, device. So it pulls that up, which is nice to look at while it is now going and doing some of that processing in the background. So uh, I'll leave that up so we can see that, see that come up there. Um, Let's see, do I have a good way to leave that up? I don't, sorry, because I want to go back to our code. But I'll, I'll pop back to it when the image, oh, did it already, is it doing its thing? No, it's, uh, it's connecting right now. So looking back at our Moo session, um, we then are setting the typeface that we're using or the font that we're using, which is a bitmapped font. We have our text position where it's going to set on X and Y. Uh, and then we have the two pieces of text that we're putting up there. So we have two, two values there. What color they are. They're white. Um, max length of a title before we cut it off so we don't just flood uh, through the buffer. And uh, then the image JSON path, image location, uh, as well as this is, um, this is the stuff that's being passed up to the Adafruit I.O. to tell it, here's the path of the, JSON's, the JSON file found for a JPEG. Uh, and then this is the resize. Uh, and positioning that we're going to have. So it's just taking it from 9-something pixels wide to 320 by 240 uh, in this case. And so that's all uh, constructed, the, the PyPortal object. And now here's what happens when we uh, get to the main loop of the program. Uh, it checks for a response. When there is none, it's doing nothing. Then it's uh, trying every 30 minutes to fetch, which is the PyPortal library command that goes and runs all of that good stuff that sends the, uh, the query out to the NASA API and then sends the uh, request over to the Adafruit I.O. server to do the resize uh, and reformat of the image. Uh, and then we wait 30 times 60 seconds, so 30 minutes, to do it all again. Um, so that is... Oh, wait, we've got Brent uh, Rubel in our live chat over in YouTube. Brent is super knowledgeable, Adafruit... Uh, guy about a lot of the IoT things. So let's see if he's, so questions people have. Um, just checked astronomy picture of the day HTML and unlike your PyPortal code, it does not auto refresh. Oh, okay, thanks, Bill. It's Bill Ferguson. Uh, Brent. Oh, okay, so the question was so could you do the same from a subreddit like pictures of nature? And Brent says yes, but you'd need to retrieve a new image every time you call the URL. Um, 
I don't know why that is, but we'll be doing, we'll be posting more um, projects that are using image grabbing, and as we grab them from different sources, you'll see some nuances come into play. Um, refresh, I think Brent's saying you'll need to refresh. Okay. Uh, and where did my, I've lost my Discord. Any questions in there? Um, you can regenerate a new API key over on the Adafruit I.O. site, Brent says. Uh, actually, that was not my Adafruit I.O. key that I, that I exposed there for a moment. It was my uh, NASA one, which um, I'm a little less worried about. So it's not tied to anything other than my ability to do this. Uh, I guess it is tied to my email. So if someone saw that and went and abused the heck out of it. Um, speaking of abuse, you uh, can use that API, I think, 50 times in a day. And there's probably some frequency you can't exceed either before they cut you off and think that you're just abusing them. So um, watch, watch out that you don't accidentally set that to ping every 30 seconds or you'll, you'll pretty soon uh, fail to, to get your uh, NASA API or it'll be unhappy with you. I'm not sure what happens. Maybe we'll find out. Um, okay, so let's see. I think that covers it. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I'm really excited about the fact that we're now doing stuff with images on the Pi Portal, not just uh, local ones, but dynamically we're now able to go and grab images and do stuff, uh, which is pretty great. And, uh, you know, I don't think it'll be long before people do roll your own uh, picture frames to give to the grandparents uh, and auto populate it from some uh, Dropbox folder or something like that. It's all a matter of figuring out all the right hooks into APIs and things, but. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting that we can do this now on Pi Portal. So uh, I want to thank everyone on the CircuitPython team uh, who have, from Adafruit people to volunteers, uh, people on Discord in those chats, because it's amazing how quickly CircuitPython itself has developed, as well as a lot of these great functions on, on the uh, Pi Portal. Uh, so last thing I'll do is just remind you, if you want to go and pick up some cool stuff in the Adafruit store and you want to get 10% off, then... That's your word right there, horsehead. Don't forget that. Uh, and again, I'll mention that I'm going to be uh, at Maker Fair Miami on this coming Sunday. That's Aug uh, April 7th, not August, April 7th. Um, and I'm doing a talk at 1 o'clock uh, Eastern Time there. So if you're in the area, go, go to Maker Fair Miami. I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, and next week, Wednesday at... 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 10th will be the live Adabox 11 unboxing. So please stop on by. It's going to happen during what is normally the Ask an Engineer time slot. I'm doing a Adabox takeover. I'll be there. And uh, I hope you are there too. So for uh, Adafruit Industries, this has been John Park's workshop. I'm John Park, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.